Welcome to Cardiac Delusions. Let's see our code today. The most common cause of orthostatic hypotension is autonomic neuropathy. Is that true or false? Our patient is a 67-year-old male who presented to the OPD complaining of dizziness and near collapse when he stands up upright from a sitting position. These symptoms were new for him as he persisted for just two weeks. His blood pressure on sitting position was 110 over 70 and on standing after one minute it falls to 90 over 60 millimeter mercury. So there is a clinical diagnosis for orthostatic hypotension. An ECG and echo were unremarkable and neurological consultation was done for the possibility of autonomic neuropathy as a cause of orthostatic hypotension. Extensive neurological investigations were performed with no evidence at all of any dysautonomia. So the only advice given to the patient by the doctor was to increase fluid intake. The patient was still symptomatic and so he sought medical advice at another doctor who checked his past history to discover that he is hypertensive, taking Ramipril 5mg and hydrochlorothiazide 25mg and just before the onset of his symptoms his GP prescribed him Duxazucine 4mg due to uncontrolled blood pressure. So what was the next action? Duxazucine was stopped. There was dramatic improvement in the symptoms. So this patient had orthostatic hypotension, not caused by autonomic neuropathy as was assumed by the first doctor. No, it was an iatrogenic cause. First of all, what do we mean by syncope or blackout? It means a transient loss of consciousness caused by cerebral hyperfusion characterized by rapid onset, short duration and spontaneous complete recovery. It has three causes which may be reflex syncope, orthostatic hypotension or sometimes called orthostatic syncope or the most dangerous cardiac syncope. What are the features that suggest orthostatic hypotension? It occurs while or after standing, less severe or absent on setting. Standing after exertion may precipitate the orthostatic hypotension. Sometimes it may occur after heavy meal and so it is called postprandial hypotension. It has a temporal relationship with the start or changes of dosage of any antihypertensive or diuretics. That's why it is important to check the medication history. And hypotension is exacerbated by venous pulling during exercise. That's why sometimes it may occur after exercise or after meals and after prolonged bed rest. So what are the causes? It may be drug induced as in case of antihypertensive or diuretics, volume depletion either due to decreased water intake or increased fluid loss via diarrhea or vomiting. Primary autonomic failure is a famous cause caused by neurogenic orthostatic hypotension either due to pure autonomic failure, multiple system atrophy, Parkinson or Lewy body dementia and is more common to be secondary autonomic failure rather than primary like diabetes, amyloidosis, spinal cord injury or sometimes autoimmune neuropathy or paraneoplastic syndrome or uremia. So drug induced orthostatic hypotension is the most common cause especially with antihypertensive or any medications with alpha blocking effect like alpha blockers or tricyclic antipressants and volume depletion either to decrease fluid intake, increase fluid loss or bleeding may precipitate orthostatic hypotension. The active standing test is the key diagnostic step for orthostatic hypotension. We ask for it when we suspect orthostatic hypotension as we measure blood pressure and heart rate while supine and then after three minutes of standing. If there is fall in systolic blood pressure more than or equal 20 from baseline, fall in diastolic more than or equal 10 from baseline, or fall of systolic blood pressure to an absolute value is a 90 millimeter mercury, so it is diagnostic of orthostatic hypotension. If there is increase in the heart rate, more than 30 beat per minute from baseline or to an absolute value more than 120 beat per minute within 10 minutes in absence of hypotension it is diagnostic of another disorder called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome famously called POTS. What happens to the heart rate? It usually increases with the drop of blood pressure in the majority of patients complaining of orthostatic hypotension, but sometimes it is planted or there is no increase in heart rate in case of neurogenic orthostatic hypotension caused by autonomic neuropathy, and sometimes there is an exaggerated increase in case of anemia or hypovolemia. So these are the causes of orthostatic hypotension. 
What about autonomic neuropathy or famously called neurogenic hypotension? Before assuming that the patient is having neurogenic or sustatic hypotension, you need to exclude the most common causes, which are volume depletion, and check the patient's medication because they are correctable causes. If they are not present or they are corrected and the patient still complain of orthostatic hypotension, at that time we can consider neurogenic orthostatic hypotension. So what about this cause as the most common cause of orthostatic hypotension is autonomic neuropathy? It is absolutely wrong. The most common cause is volume depletion and medications. They are reversible factors, easy to detect, easy to correct. After excluding them, you can think of autonomic neuropathy. Thank you very much for watching this video and wait next week for the next delusion.